So by popular request of virtually two people, um, this is a short video on the function of the windlass and on structural and functional Hallett's limitus. Um, these are things which give a lot of people a lot of trouble, but they're pretty straightforward. Uh, I shall try to do this in the most non-technical way I can. So first of all, the normal windlass, um, as you can see from this fabulous model of the foot here, absolutely no expense was spent in the production of this video. Um, you've got the rear foot, the first metatarsal, and the first toe, and you've got the plantar fascia, some people refer to it as plantar aponeurosis, uh, which runs from the point of the heel into the IPJs. Uh, there are slips which go to all of the IPJs, um, not the IPJs, sorry, the proximal phalanx, um, but we're just going to talk about the um, the big toe joint, the first met and the first toe uh, for this video. So the normal function is that uh, when you lift your heel during gait, obviously your big toe joint bends. When your big toe joint bends, that tightens the windlass up around the drum and you can see it causes the first metatarsal to plant flex. So once again, if you look at the area here, it's a little clearer. When you bend the big toe, it plant flexes the first metatarsal. That's the basic concept of the windlass. When the first toe dorsiflexes, the first metatarsal plantar flexes. I will say that again. When the first toe, when the big toe, when the hallux dorsiflexes or is dorsiflexed, it causes the first metatarsal to plantar flex. This is obviously in a foot with a working effective windlass mechanism. Um, there is the flip side of that which is that when the first metatarsal dorsiflexes, if I do this here, you should be able to see, it causes the first toe to plantar flex. So when the first toe dorsiflexes, the first metatarsal plantar flexes. When the first metatarsal dorsiflexes, the first toe plantar flexes. There's an awful lot of dorsiflexing and plantar flexing there. Basically, all you've got to think is that what it, if you look at these two units, whatever one does, the other does the opposite. So when the toe dorsiflexes, the met plantar flexes. When the met plantar flexes, the toe dorsiflexes. That's how it should work in an ideal world. And the idea of that is that when you're walking and you bend your toe, it draws the medial arch up. You can see that increases the height of the medial arch. Um, and it makes the midfoot rigid so that when you propel, when you're running or walking, um, you've got a nice rigid joint through here. If that was in its loose open chain phase when you propelled, you'd have all sorts of midfoot problems around here, which a lot of people do. So that's the, the normal functioning of the windlass. Um, structural how it's rigidus was the first condition that uh, I was asked to, um, to look at. How it's rigidus is very simple. It is when the hallux is rigid. The clues in the name. Um, some people talk about grades of hallux rigidus, um, although I know there is a model for that. It's not really very good terminology. A big toe joint is either rigid or it's not rigid. So the only real grades of hallux rigidus are you either have it or you don't. Usually hallux rigidus is caused by an enthusiastic surgeon sticking a bloody great bolt through it that way. Stop it bending. Um, so that's hallux rigidus. Structural hallux limitus is caused when the big toe joint is limited from dorsiflexing um, by a structural impingement. This is usually arthritic change here and here. Um, generally speaking, you'll see a big dorsal lip and you'll find that the big toe joint will only be able to bend so far before it actually hits that lip and then can't bend any further. Um, you can test for this in non-weight bearing when the person is on the couch, when you try and dorsiflex the big toe there, you're looking normally for 60-odd um, degrees or thereabouts. Um, if you can't get that, then there is structural hallux limitus. That's the slightly easier one. Functional hallux limitus is a tiny bit tricky, um, but I shall try to make it a bit easier for you. Try and demystify it a bit here. Um, any kind of hallux limitus is limitation of the hallux. It's limitation of the dorsiflexion of the hallux. Um, so we've already talked about it being limited by a bony impingement on top. The other thing that can limit it is the plantar fascia. The plantar fascia is pulling down, is plantar flexing, exerting plantar flexion moments. Um, so if there, it's exerting loads and loads of plantar flexion moments, if I pull on this really, really tight, I won't be able to bend it that way. So that is your functional 
Alex Limitus in a nutshell. The way it generally works is that the tension of the plantar fascia here um, is defined by the position of the first metatarsal. If the first metatarsal is plantar flexed from its normal position, you'll see that the plantar fascia is loose. So there's no limitation there. This toe can bend quite happily. If the first metatarsal is dorsiflexed, you can see that now has tightened that up. So to actually bend that becomes very difficult because the plantar fascia is pulling it down as I'm trying to pull it up. So when you are standing up, what defines the tension in the plantar fascia is to a large degree the amount of force under the first met head. The more force there is trying to dorsiflex the first met head, the tighter this will be and the more this will limit the dorsiflexion of the big toe, hence functional hallux limitus. Um, there's a couple of tests for this. Uh, in non-weight bearing, you can put your thumb under the big toe joint and try and bend the big toe. And what you should find is that if everything is working properly, as you do that, the first metatarsal plant flexes against your thumb and you'll actually feel those two moving against each other. Sometimes, however, what you'll feel is even when you put just a tiny amount of pressure under there, under the first metatarsal, you then can't bend this at all, no matter how hard you try. And that's going to likely cause problems in gait. The more classical test for this is the Jacks test, um, or Hubsche manoeuvre, uh, which is where you have a patient stand up, and very simply, you put your thumb under their big toe, and you try to dorsiflex their big toe. If the windlass is working well, when you do this, what you'll see is the first metatarsal will plant a flex, the arch will come up, and the leg will slightly rotate outwards. Um, so that's a good working windlass. What you'll see sometimes, though, is you could have a, a lower grade of functional hallux limitus where you'll try and do that, and it'll do it, but you really have to push up under there. It takes a lot of force to do. Um, or you can have it where this is so tight, where there's so much of a limitation that when you try and push up under the first met, all that happens is the whole thing comes up in the air. The whole medial side of the foot um, comes up in the air that there's actually no bending at all. Um, and that would definitely indicate functional hallux limitus. There's a few definitions of this. Um, the guy that really wrote the book on it uh, was Howard Dannenberg, um, and he's got a, a definition um, which off the top of my head is when the um, big toe is unable to dorsiflex during gait. I don't particularly like that definition um, because it's very binary, it's very you have it or you don't, and I don't think it's very clear. Um, I prefer Kevin Kirby's definition. Um, Kevin Kirby's definition of functional hallux limitus is the situation exists when the internal plantar flexion moments, that is the amount of force from inside the foot plantar flexing the big toe, is greater than the external dorsiflexion moments, that is the force from the ground trying to bend the toe. I'll say that again because it had the word moments in it, which tends to cause people to have a brain freeze. Um, functional hallux limitus is a situation that exists when the internal plantar flexion moments exceed the external dorsiflexion moments. So the internal moments we call internal because they're caused by the plantar fascia, which of course is inside you. The external dorsiflexion moments is the ground pushing up on the big toe when you raise your heel. So if the force trying to internally plantar flex the toe is greater than externally dorsiflex the toe, then the toe won't bend and that's functional hallux limitus functional because it's to do with the force, the soft tissues, the tensile structures instead of the structural ones. Um, that's a very, 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 very ladybird bumper sticker, Janet and John, um, my first podiatry adventure type explanation. I have missed loads out and I have made slightly fast and free with some of the fine detail. So uh, please um, forgive that if you're uh, if you're a purist. Uh, but hopefully that should make it a little clearer for some people.